Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna talk about China's street art movement. So let's go. Painting is perhaps the oldest continuous artistic tradition in the world. Unlike Western artistic styles that are always changing, you know, they're failing, they're improving or whatnot, Chinese painting tends to stay relatively the same. When we talk about Chinese painting, we're referring to things like Gong Bi and Ink Wash. Gong Bi is since the Han Dynasty, so over 2,000 years ago. And it's a style of painting where it's more of a realist style, so it's painting what it actually looks like. That means they're using lots of different colors, it's vibrant. And then you have another style, which is ink wash. Ink wash painting is from the Liu Song Dynasty, so back in the fifth century. It's more painting the subject in its spirit rather than what it actually is or looks like. I guess you could say Chinese Impressionism type of style. Ink wash tends to use only black and red ink. It's often referred to as Chinese watercolor, and this is perhaps the most recognizable type of Chinese art. Of course, many other art forms have developed in the process, but these are two main styles that have remained relevant and influential on other modern approaches. Let's talk about street art in China. Street art has a long history, even here in China. But the difference is that it's shaped by different factors. So the street art here is shaped by the Gongbi style, the ink wash, and Western approaches with graffiti. Street art in itself tends to be controversial. It usually has some sort of social, economic, or political theme attached to it. Unfortunately, unless it's commissioned or in a protected artistic neighborhood, it tends to be illegal all over the world. In Europe and in the US, graffiti tends to be in relation to cultural underground movements. Well, it's kind of similar here in China as well. So in the 1920s, revolutionary slogans were painted on public spaces to further the communist cause. Also during the Cultural Revolution, the Chinese Communist Party wrote political messages in red ink on the neighborhood walls. But enough about the past. Let's talk about today, here in Shenzhen, where I am now. Street art, whether it is commissioned, whether it's illegal, always has a purpose. Let's talk first about the commissioned street art. best places to go for that is Waterfront Park Shenzhen Bay, which is right here. What's really interesting is people are paid to put their artwork here that have such strong social and political themes to it. And that's what's really cool is because they're getting the chance to express their individualism, express their independence, and make the public land their own. Right now, I'm in OTT Lof, which is an artistic neighborhood here in Shenzhen. I've referred to it in the past as kind of the Boulder, Colorado of China. It is old factories and warehouses that have been transformed into creative spaces, into art galleries, coffee shops, and it's a really beautiful neighborhood to walk through. Not only that, it's in a protective street art area that is essentially a canvas of all the street art. There's art on the buildings, there's art on the ground, there's art in the shops, it's just everywhere. Everything is painted, everything is so beautiful, and it's really cool to see street art in an area being displayed this much. Even though there's lots of commission art and protective art areas, there's still a lot of illegal art out there. And those are in the same usual areas that you can find all around the world, along canals, under bridges, it's all there. And it's the same way here in China. But the difference here in China is that the graffiti kind of has a different twist to it. It's got that heavy influence of ink wash combined with the Western culture's influence of graffiti. Actually, some artists refer to it as an exquisite refinement with a Western approach. An important difference in graffiti in China versus other parts of the world is the calligraphy itself, the handwriting. In Eastern culture, specifically China, the Chinese take a lot of pride in the skill of calligraphy and in the artistic style of it. That is very heavily seen in the graffiti itself because it's really beautiful and there's a lot of effort that goes into it. So we often see that here in China in tagging. One of the most influential and famous calligraphy artists known as the King of Kowloon, which is a neighborhood in Hong Kong. Song Su Choi was a very well-respected calligraphy artist, not only in China, but in all parts of Asia. His stuff was preserved and then actually exhibited in other parts of the world. What's cool about China is that they are kind of taking street art and making it a big business. You know, they are commissioning a lot of artists. They're making it something that can be legal and they're turning it into something that people can make a living out of. And it's not just the regular tagging and it's not, I guess, 
as seen as bad as other parts of the world might make it seem like. They're turning it into something, you know, they're letting street artists work with designers, they can have their own brand of spray paint, they can actually get their work out there and be known for it versus the other street artists that might be dwelling in the dark and, you know, because they're not painting it in the areas that should be painted. What's cool about China is they have so many neighborhoods that they allow you to go put and exhibit your art. They're making it a, a possible career, which is really cool. They're giving people the chance to do this and to uh, partake in it. Another really famous and influential street artist is a guy named Rob. He's a Beijing street artist. And Rob is known for his very eye-catching stencil work. He's often actually referred to as the Chinese Banksy. He is very well known here in modern China, expressing his strong social political views in his work. Rob is well known for this quote that says, street art comes from the West but my art is a reflection of the China I live in. And I think that sums up a lot of the modern street art movement here in China. I think that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed or learned something new. If there's anything I missed, please leave a comment in the section below or tell me your opinions, what you think about the Chinese street art movement. Also, if you have any suggestions of future videos that you want me to be producing, please let me know. That'd be super helpful. Remember to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.